This is a gas chromatograph we have that we're going to be using today. We have not only the chromatograph but the strip chart recorder and I'll talk about that later. We have two columns that you'll see on the gas chromatograph. One of them will use the DC 200 or DC 710 or 710. We're not going to be using the carbowax, the polyethylene oxide based um, stationary phase. We're just this 3238 class is only going to be using the DC 200 or DC 710. All right, before you start, you want to make sure as you look at your strip chart recorder that you mark the T0. That is the time to zero seconds, you're going to mark it where the pen is. That's going to be T equals zero. And I've got a big marker here, but it's just going to be a pencil or pen you use. To mark the position of the pen, I guess, as it stands, this chart not moving. You're going to turn the chart roller on at the same time you inject your sample. So that the distance becomes a measure of the retention time. So I'm going to take you back to the GC now, or, so you can see both, the GC and the strip chart recorder. Before you inject sample, you've marked your T0 on the, strip, on the uh, paper. You want to make sure that you have signal going to the strip chart recorder. And you can see the pin is moving as I toggle the zero knob. That's something you want to check, because you'd rather check and make sure you're going to get some sort of detection than just inject your sample and hope. You can check by just toggling the zero knob. If you see movement of the needle, you're ready to go. Now how do you draw up your sample? Be very careful. If you have a small glass syringe, sometimes you can miss the liquid. You need to make sure when you draw, you actually see the meniscus of the liquid inside of the chamber and not just air. And please make sure it happens. Sometimes the tips are clogged. You won't draw liquid. And you'll have to draw the liquid such that there will be always a little bit of air between the liquid and the plunger. So you'll need to make sure you watch the meniscus and bring it up to, let's say we have five microliters we want to use. Well, we'll have to move the plunger beyond five so that we have five microliters of liquid. Once the liquid is in, and I'm going to go ahead and inject a lot of air so we can see the needle move hopefully just a little bit. If you have liquid, the needle will move a lot. Liquid injected in gives you a lot more sample running down the line than just gas injected. When you inject, watch the position. I'm going to have my hands, one hand close to the tip of the syringe to guide this needle into the septum and the other hand on the back holding the plunger because you'll sometimes have the plunger pushed right out as the pressure pushes against your sample. Inject as quickly as possible then pull out. Once you're in, inject as quickly as possible. Lastly, make sure your partner as soon as you inject, not when you insert the needle in, but when you inject the solution, have them flip the, flip the chart paper on. You want to be at two centimeters per minute as your chart speed. You saw the needle, it moved just a little bit. Sometimes you'll see an air peak with your sample, sometimes you won't. It'll be swamped out by the signal from your liquids that are moving down the column. You'll let the sample go, and again, this would have been turned on at the same time that I injected. But the chart paper will move ever so slowly, and you can kind of see that. Now our T0 mark is where we're moving from. That means as soon as we inject it, we again turn the chart paper on. That's going to be proportional to the time it takes the sample to come off. Now what you want to do is don't guess, uh, pull the, wait till the paper all runs out before the next person gets on the GC. What you can do is just label your data and say this is P and, and D for you know, Paul and Diane. And uh, you just label your data and maybe put a date, we'll put 9, 16, and that's yours. And now you can go ahead and leave, come back five minutes, four minutes later, and you know what part of the data is yours. How long do you wait for the next injection? Guys, you need to know what you're looking at. You need to know, hey, I'm expecting two or three peaks. Because once you see those two or three peaks and then there's a lot of baseline after that, the next person can jump on. You don't need to wait and wait and wait and wait till the TA says to go ahead and have the next person go on. If you see the peaks that you're expecting, you come back down to baseline, you've labeled your data, the next person can go ahead and jump on. And then maybe five minutes as this rolls out, you can cut off your data. That's it. And make sure again, always make sure you draw up sample. Make sure you check for that. These columns are going to be hot, so please keep your fingers off the cover, but make sure when you guide that in, you hold the needle, and once you're in, inject as quickly as possible. Thanks.